Hello and salut everybody. Welcome back to the channel chatting with Nicole. If you have not subscribed, do me a favor and do just that. If you're new, welcome to the family. I thank you for being here. Subscribe and also check the notification bell so that you don't miss the next videos. Uh, but I'm very grateful for your support. I thank you for being here. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for indulging me. So what are we talking about today? What are we chatting about today? Um, today, I want us to chat about two topics. But the first topic today um, is my personal my personal review, personal review and feedback of, you know, my visit to Dhaka, Senegal. So if you guys have not seen the videos that I posted, um, I want you to, after this, I want you to go and, and, and review those videos because that they are, you know, Senegal some, has some special, you know, places that I have shared with you. So it's important that you check them out. So first, I want to pull the disclaimer out there. These are just my personal, you know, review, my personal feedback. Um, you may have a different experience. And uh, when you go there or when you go, you may see things differently than I have. But this is just my personal, you know, experience. So I wanted to share this with you because I'm encouraging you to go to Senegal and go to Africa and experience those things that I have experienced. And, and I thought that it was only fair for me to give a high level review of what I feel, what I think um, about the city. And remember, well, I'm not just giving a review of the whole country. I'm only doing my review of Dakar. That's where I spent my time. I did not have enough, enough experience in the other cities. So I'm only focusing in Dakar. So let's keep that in mind and also stay open-minded. If you disagree with me about anything that I said, Go ahead and let me know. Put it in a comment. You know, correct me or you know, um, if you if you know better, <laughs> make sure because remember, I want it. I want this uh, channel to be interactive channel. I want to hear more from you. So I'm encouraging you to add your comments. Reach out to me. Let us chat together. You know, not do not. I don't want this to be one way. I want us to you know to just make this interactive. So I thank you very much for listening to me. So um, my experience um, as a leader, um, you when you want to give a feedback or review about something, you can't just talk about the bad. Uh, you can't just talk about the good. You have to do both. And it's better for you if you're giving somebody a review. If you don't know, I'm giving you a free lesson here. <laughs> if you don't know, uh, whenever you want to give a feedback, whether you're a child, whether, whatever it is, Always remember to start with the good stuff first, all right? Because it's different. When you start with the good stuff first, then when the bad stuff start coming, they will take it, they will be more receptive than if you just start with bad stuff. If you start with bad stuff, then, then the good stuff will just pass by. They will not hear it because by that time they are so upset and they can't hear the good stuff, right? So that's one of the reasons why whenever you want to give a feedback or review, always start with the good stuff. Okay, with that being said, I am going to start with the good stuff in Senegal. And the best thing, I don't want to start with the airlines because it has nothing to do with them. So I want to start from the airport, right? So the airport, um, I give them B plus because the airport is, it's an international standard. I mean, they, they, it's great. It works well. Um, and it, it has, um, a, the, the visa, we don't have to pay for a visa like other African countries. You don't have to pay for a visa. The visa is free. Um, they don't give you trouble with the visa. And we thank Bill Clinton for that because there was a, an agreement, um, from the, with the U S and, and Senegal. So I'm starting with the airport. The airport is, you know, international standards. It is it, it actually better than some of the U S international airports or u.s airports yeah i promise you that so the one thing about the airport they even have a play 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 area for kids um the one thing i do not like and i think needs to improve it's important if they want to make this a standard international standard or airport standard um it's a must and it's not there right now and it is free wi-fi you know 
that that's a big deal for me it may not be a big deal for you because you have your own data but me when i go to the airport even though i have my own data but when i go to international airport i'm looking for that free wi-fi and there was not free wi-fi i could not find one um they told me there was one but it's 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 very low um uh, but i didn't see it my phone could not find it but there was a wi-fi for VIPs, <laughs> lounge, you know, those big, big man, you know, VIPs in the lounge. So there's a Wi-Fi for them, but it's protected, password protected. You couldn't get the password. I actually tried to go talk to the security guy. He was like, no, I don't have it. I didn't believe him, but he didn't give it to me. The point is <laughs> the airport, I gave it a B plus. The only reason why I didn't give it an A is because Wi-Fi and it's big deal for me but you know perfect you know we didn't have any issues even they they have so many employees they have so many helpers there that it, it went smoothly going and coming back so i give them you know kudos for that because i suffer in a, a lot of i have suffered in a lot of airport in the states disappointed in a lot of airport and i I'm, i give them kudos for that so that's one so that's one the country is very developed. When I say developed, meaning the apartments, the houses, um, U.S. standard. You know, some of them even look better than some apartments here. So that is a plus. Fitness friendly. I already showed you that video. I want you to go check it out if you have not seen it. It's fitness friendly. Diverse cuisine. We have to talk about food. Uh, diverse cuisine. Um, a lot of seafood because I love seafood because again, the country is surrounded by, you know, the sea and I talk about say water and then I, you know, the sea. So the country is surrounded by, you know, the sea. So it's a lot of seafood and I love that. So diverse cuisine is another one. And another thing I want to talk about is U.S. presence. I don't know if this is a plus or a minus, but the embassy, the U.S. embassy, again, it is huge. A whole a whole neighborhood if you like it the whole neighborhood for us you know embassy and people who work there are um, from the us us so it's a again i don't know if it's a plus or a minus but to me um i'm putting it on my plus on my pro um because it it's it was impressive and the second thing is the the number of african americans that i saw there you know, and the only thing is I've seen them in certain areas, you know, certain restaurants um, to be because they have a specific restaurant they go to. Maybe it could be because of the food, the, 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 the food, the specific food that certain restaurant offer or certain hotel offers. But I've seen a lot of, you know, African-American presence there. For the people, uh, what I like about the people is they are very much involved into, in, in the politics. Ooh. they are very much involved they stand up for themselves they, they they don't take you know they they stand up for their right they don't let you know it's not like in in togo or other countries you don't have a say you know your people don't have a say uh it's whatever you say you know every every two years or every four years you are you declare yourself as a winner <laughs> every time every election and i don't even know why we have election it's not like that in senegal there is an election and there will be an election and its people are really very much involved in the politics they in the know and they stand up for themselves so the only bad thing about that from what i heard from the people living there is even though they are very much involved even though uh, they are protesting and standing up for themselves and uh, they, they're not for injustice. They are all for justice and all of that. The bad thing about that is they don't vote. You know what I mean? They go out, you know, in, in, in bigger number and, and they are there, you know, they are, <laughs> they are protesting. But when it comes to, um, you know, the voting, they don't vote. Um, so, and I believe that is something that is not good, but for, for, uh, to me personally, I believe it's because um, of education. Um, I believe that is because they don't know the effect the voting will have. Um, I believe that they don't know the importance of voting. So I feel like if you're listening to me out there <laughs> in Dakar and Senegal, what you need to do for your people is educate them. Educate them 
on the importance of voting. Yes, you stand up for yourself. You, you, you know, you do all of that. You come out and, and protest and do all of that. And you are in the no, you're doing all the good things. But if you don't vote, it's not, it's not going to matter. So I want, you know, I think that's what they need. So since I'm keeping this high level, let's recap the, the pros for Senegal, for Dakar is what the, the airport, the development of the country. We talk about the fitness friendly. We talk about the, um, uh, the people being, um, in the know, the politics, they are really involved in the politics. They stand up for themselves. We talk about that. We can forget about the diverse cuisine, uh, food, um, and it's just you know it's it, it's it's heartwarming um, to go to a country um, to see all of that the development um, in African continent. So I'm very very proud um, for what I have seen um, so far. So now that we talk about the pros, now the cons. So the not so good uh, we have to talk about. So the not so good. Um, on my list is lack of, or I should say non-existent parking lots. Yes, they are not parking lots in Senegal, in Dakar specifically. They are not parking because they took every space available. <laughs> every space, like you see an apartment, they build an apartment, nice apartment, and on the bottom, and on the bottom, you think it's going to be a parking deck. No, you think it's going to be a garage for a parking. No, they are building a boutique for somebody else, somebody to come rent it and sell stuff in it. So, <laughs> no, when they build, they build a nice house, nice houses, but they take in every little space they can find to make money because every space <laughs> they can, they can, can occupy somebody in there to make them more money. So when they're building their houses, they don't think about parking. They don't think about parking at all. So that is a major issue. It was supposed to be, they say they were building it. They were gonna call it like Petit Paris. Petit Paris just mean little Paris. You know how the, 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 the streets, you know, the roads are narrow, tiny in Paris. Yes, they're doing it that way. Uh, but, and, and there's no parking. There's no parking, whether it's a, a commercial area, residential area, there's no parking. Every little space, um, even in the neighborhood, you see every little space, a mom and dad is using it for its boutique, no parking. So for me, that is, that's a disaster. For me, that's a disaster. I feel like in order for them to actually finally figure out that they need parking, they're going to have to do something underground because there's no space. There's no room in sanitary. It's so small, but too many people. So it's people population is more than, you know, the space they have. So that is a big, big, big issue in, in Dakar. Too many people, not enough space, too many cars, not enough parking, not enough roads. <laughs> and speaking of roads, oh my God, there's no lack of traffic lights, <laughs> traffic signs, traffic lights. No, I think we saw one or two stoplights somewhere else but literally no traffic lights no traffic no no traffic signs we actually finally saw a traffic light i was like oh my god you know what i mean and then we stopped and we stopped and everybody else was just like they will slow down a bit like i think they were like why you guys stop you know they'll slow down a bit and figure out what the hell is going on with us but then they just keep going <laughs> But the light is red. <laughs> the light is red. It didn't say that, oh, maybe you can stop. You know, you may, you if you want to, you can stop. It's a traffic light. It's a red light. But every time we were still, I'm sorry, I was laughing so hard. We in a car. Every time somebody comes behind us, they're like, they slow down. I think they're trying to figure, why in God's name are you guys stopped? And then they just pass us by and just leave. <laughs> but we 
we just stood there we were just laughing i was just laughing the motorcycles you know the cars they were doing the same thing until it was green and then we went <laughs> for the life of me i don't know how they make it <laughs> and speaking of that the signs traffic lights and traffic signs um aggressive drivers Ooh, aggressive drivers the, the the taxi man thinks that they are they own the roads and then you know sometimes you feel like people who are driving like a more expensive car uh like the lexus and the bmw they think that they own the road <laughs> no, so while you are driving oh my god if you're if you're not if you're not an offensive driver, if you're a defensive driver, if you have patience, I'm telling you, you cannot live, you cannot drive in Senegal. Me, even though I think that I am offensive driver, I cannot, I just cannot do it. So that's, that, those are the things I really think that they need to think about. They need to figure out how to create, how to build underground, you know, parking because there's no parking traffic light traffic sign they need to have control they need to have a law with traffic where traffic is terrible people literally can hit your car and not even say anything to you they'll just pass by and just be sitting there i mean literally somebody hit our car he was in a motorcycle he hit our car he wasn't his motorcycle he didn't even like not even i'm sorry no nope. he was just sitting there and there was scratches on the car <laughs> so okay let me calm down Calm down, Nicole. Okay. So if you're not an aggressive driver, if you're not crazy, you cannot drive. <laughs> you cannot drive in Dakar. It, it is just that terrible. So moving on, the other thing that I want to talk about is language barrier. Language barrier um, education. You know, you remember how I was telling you that, you know, because of the voting, it may be because of education. Um, they may need to educate them for them to know the importance of voting. The majority of the population here, the natives, have not been to school. So the language barrier is there. Um, it's about 90%. Again, I'm just estimating here. But 90% of the population, the natives, the natives there do not speak even, they don't even speak French. You know, they speak, you love their own language, their own dialect but they can't speak French. So some of them, even in the market, you struggle to talk to them in French uh, because they don't, they haven't been to school. And some of them there, they speak broken French because they just learn it as they go. By selling or by doing business with others, talking with others, they, they learn as they go. So the language barrier to me, I think it needs to improve. That means that the government needs to invest in its people education and help them go to school help them you know get educated so next up on the list is the water the tap water just like any other country um senegal is not or dakar is not an exception um there are areas where people are more poorer than the others there are worse areas than the others you know what i mean so it's not an exception um there are poor people more poorer than other places so with that being said that means that not everybody, not all the population can afford to drink bottle of water. And they, so they have to drink tap water and tap water. When you look at it, it is, you know, it's clear. You can think it's clear. So they're drinking the tap water and it's ruining their teeth. It is ruining. I, I can only imagine how much damage it's doing inside. If we can see their teeth, you know, colored. Um, you know, I mean, some people losing their teeth. It's just, it's just to me, teeth is important to me. So the water is not good enough for the population to be drinking. So the water is not clean. So I, 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 if you're listening to me, you know, the government, the leaders, you guys need to do something for your, you know, your people because you're destroying your people. You are destroying their beauty. You are destroying their health. Yes, physically, we can see them. They're healthy and, and exercising and everything. But, you know, inside is important. Inside is important. Their teeth is important. Their gums are important. So the water they're drinking is destroying that. You know, it's destroying them from the inside. So 
water and clean water that is a, a a big deal for me so that is a a, a con for me it's a bad thing for me uh, so my next and i believe last um for not so good um is the cost of living yep the cost of living you can compare that to new york city yeah i'm not i'm not kidding you okay let me tell you let me give you an example I had a haircut in Senegal and that haircut cost me $40. Can you hear me? In Dakar, the haircut cost me $40. That's the most hair expensive haircut. And you know what? The, the most, um, you know, uh, compliments I got on a haircut, you know, in the life of my whole haircut history <laughs> was a haircut that I got in Lomé and that haircut was mil franc mil franc is literally less than you know a dollar and fifty cents but the haircut that I got in Senegal is forty dollars so when I tell you that the cost of living in Senegal you can compare it to New York City I mean it so just to give you a little contest and make this fun for you, I hope I'm making it fun for you, a little bit about this haircut. Right? What had happened was, <laughs> after I was done with the haircut, first I didn't ask how much it was gonna cost because I just, you know, think about Lomé haircut, a dollar less than a dollar and 50, I'm assuming if, it, you know, worse will be maybe double that. So I didn't bother to ask how much it's going to cost. It wasn't until the haircut that she was done and I was at the register. I was like, oh, okay. But the whole point is I paid. I had to pay. I could not say, no, I cannot pay you. You didn't tell me it shouldn't be. I just paid her. It wasn't until again, I got in the car that my sister was like, that's the worst haircut. <laughs> She was like, no, this is not a good haircut. She messed up your head. You know, this is not a good haircut. I'm telling you, she did it to the point where, first of all, I was feeling bad for my $40. And then, you know, she made it so bad that I was believing it. You know what I mean? It's a lot, um, a lot of uh, stories about my haircut. But, you know, at the end, I was okay with it. Because, again, the lady, she moved from, you know, New York the lady, the salon, the lady who cut my hair, she moved from New York. She's not from Senegal. She literally just visited Senegal twice and she was sold. So she moved there. So she's charging New York rates for, you know, VIP people. Well, I was not a VIP person, but she didn't know that. <laughs> I was speaking English. Everybody else there was speaking English. So they are VIP. So they just assume I was VIP. Well, I was not a VIP, so I was very, very disturbed about my $40 haircut. So that's my story um, about my haircut. But the truth is, the reality is, yes, she was a VIP salon. Yes, she's getting, she's treating, she's doing hair for VIP people, I would say. But the locals, you can still get, you know, a haircut for a dollar and fifty that I was mentioning because I, after that I started researching, I started asking. So yes, you can still get a a, 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 a haircut for a dollar fifty, the two dollar, the five dollars. You know, depending on what you know where you go, uh, who you know, you know your 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 neighborhoods. Just like here, every neighborhood charges differently. So it's the same there. So I just want to make sure that I put that out there. All right. You can still feel sorry for me for spending $40. <laughs> you know, apartments there, three bedroom apartments, $2,000. To buy an apartment, three bedroom apartment, it, it is about $300,000. Grocery. To spend grocery, just two people uh, for grocery, you're going to be spending like $300. So when I tell you cost of living in Senegal, it's, it's but if you're making the money, if you are there and your company, you know, you're working with a company where a company is paying for your rent, is paying for your, you know, your expenses, then you don't have any problems. But if you have to do all of that, like if you're moving from here, and you have to go with your salary. If you're not, you know, in the, 
you know, the six figures, um, then you're going to be in trouble. So the cost of living in Senegal is super high. So that is a con for me. So I want you guys to pay attention to that. So for, you know, the not so good, uh, we talk about the pro and then we talk about the cons. We have non-existent parking, lack of traffic lights and tr lack of traffic, you know, signs, aggressive driving, language barrier, unclean water, and cost of living. So for the pros, in case you forgot, because we had a lot to discuss today, in case you forgot, we talked about, we started it with the airport, right? And then we talked about the overall development. We talked about the fitness friendly. We talked about, you know, the, the cuisine, the food. Uh, I want to add a bonus. <laughs> I want to add a bonus for us. And this bonus could be good. It could also, it could be good or bad, depending on, you know, what you like. And that bonus is the city does not sleep. When I said I was comparing it to New York, you know how loud New York City is? That's how loud Dakar is. Dakar is loud. It is so loud. The 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 prayer from the mosque, it's loud. You know, when they're doing it, they're praying. It's very loud. You know, we we'll talk about the roosters in the morning, starting at 4 a.m. You know, they started, you know, they're singing as well. Constructions, a lot of constructions, a lot of noise with construction, you know, parties on the rooftop. So it is loud. You can hear it. A lot of apartments have rooftops. So you go upstairs and, you know, go up and have parties. So all of that city, so the city does not sleep. No matter what time you go out, there is, you know, life. You know, people are doing things. If you are, you know, some boutiques are open. The grocery store don't close till, you know, midnight. So the city... It's constantly alive, a lot of activities, uh, a lot of things to do. The reason why it's not so good for me, because I like quiet at night. When I go to bed, complete quiet. I, I don't, I can't deal with a lot of noise. So for me, that was, to me, it will be a negative, but to other people, it might be, you know, a good thing for them. So that's my bonus for you. Um, so overall, my review, my feedback for Dakar, overall, it is great progress. So I'm saying that because if you compare uh, Dakar to other Francophone countries, the Western African countries, um, besides from Abidjan, is the most developed, is the most developed that I've seen. But we can't forget, just like any other country, even with the great progress, they still have room for improvement. You know, you saw the not so good, the cons that we discussed. Some of them are serious for its people. So every country, just like every country, um, they have a room. They need, there's a room for improvement. They can do better. So there are things that they can still work on to make it the best place to live for its people, not just for tourists, not just for, you know, um, other people who are coming, but for its own people. It's important. And one of the things that, you know, I think is really important, I'm going to discuss that um, on the next video. So I give my kudos to them. Um, I will definitely go back. Uh, maybe I'll just find a quieter neighborhood um, to sleep <laughs> when I want to sleep. But I'll definitely go back because there's a lot the city has to offer, even though it's small. It's a lot that it has to offer. And there's a lot that I have not seen. A lot of, you know, places I have not visited. So I am definitely going back. So that is my high level review um, for my visit to Dakar. So I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, um, you have any comments, any concerns, whatever you have, reach out to me, send your comments in and let us continue the discussion. There's one thing that I want to do separately. There's one thing on my list of cons, you know, the not so good in Senegal that I experienced. And, but I feel like it is more abroad, meaning like it's involved more countries than just Senegal. So I'm going to do it separately. So you'll be seeing that on the next one, um, on the next post. So I'm going to do that right now. But I think if I do that here, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take too long. So I'm going to break it up and I've talked about that. And I'm looking forward to you checking that out and seeing what I'm, where I'm coming from. And, hof and hopefully somebody can hear us and do something about it. So I hope this helps you. 
I hope you enjoyed this. I did not want it to just sit here and just say boom, 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 boom. I wanted this to be more interactive and more relaxed. So that's why it took this long uh, for us to do this. And plus, you know me. I just have to be me, right? So I just be me. So I hope you enjoyed this review, uh, this feedback of mine. Um, so I want you to stay safe and blessed. And I'll see you right on the next video.